In this video, I'm going to show you how to solve optimization problems with inscribed shapes. So we want to find what is the largest area of a right triangle inscribed within a circle of radius 1. And we've got a nice little diagram here to help us. Remember that any right triangle in a circle has its hypotenuse as a diameter of the circle, so our diagram is general. No matter how we fit this right triangle in the circle, its hypotenuse will span a diameter of the circle and since the circle has radius 1, the diameter has to be length 2. Alright, so why don't we get to it? Let's write an expression for the area of this triangle. The area of a triangle is given by a equals 1 half times base times height. And why don't we let b be the base here, and then a can be the height because it's perpendicular to the base. So 1 half ba. Now we want to maximize this function. And in order to do that, we need to get it down to a function of a single variable. So we'd like to substitute for b in terms of a, or a in terms of b. And we can do that if we can find an equation relating a and b. Hey, how about the Pythagorean theorem? This is a right triangle, so leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. a squared plus b squared equals 2 squared. And why don't we just solve for b here? So b squared is equal to 2 squared, which is 4, then minus a squared, which means that b is equal to the square root of 4 minus a squared. And we can sub that into our area formula. So area is equal to 1 half times b, which is square root of 4 minus a squared, and then times a. And let's just clean this up a little bit. So this is equal to 1 half times a times square root of 4 minus a squared. Okay, so now we've got an expression for the area of the circle in terms of a single variable, and now we can maximize it by finding its stationary points. So we'll take the derivative, a prime, that's just going to come from the product rule, so it'll be equal to the derivative of the first term, a half a, derivative of that, times root of 4 minus a squared, and then plus the first term, a half a, times the derivative of 4 minus a squared. And we'll go ahead and do that computation. So derivative of 1 half a is just a half. So 1 half square root of 4 minus a squared, and then plus 1 half a, and then derivative of this thing. So the root is really like a half power, so that'll come out. 1 half, and then we'll have that 4 minus a squared to the power of a half minus 1, which is negative half. And then we've got to chain rule it, so multiply by the derivative of the inside, which is negative 2a. So we simplify, and then we find that this is equal to a half square root of 4 minus a squared minus a squared over 2 times the square root of 4 minus a squared. And we want to find the stationary points, which means we want to set that derivative equal to zero. Now, as is, this equation looks a little rough because of all of these square roots. But something that we can do to simplify this all is to multiply by this square root of 4 minus a squared. And we are allowed to do that because we know that this is not zero. a squared is not equal to 4 because a is not equal to 2 because 2 is the hypotenuse of this triangle, whereas a is just a leg and the leg is always smaller than the hypotenuse. So we go ahead and multiply by root 4 minus a squared. That simplifies the equation a lot. We just have 0 equals 1 half times 4 minus a squared, and then minus a squared over 2, which is a lot easier to solve. We have 0 equals 2 minus 1 half a squared minus our a squared over 2. Let's write that as 1 half a squared, and negative half a squared, negative half a squared, those combine into just minus a squared. So 0 equals 2 minus a squared, which means a squared equals 2, which means a equals the square root of 2, the positive root since a is a physical length here. You can check that this value is indeed a maximum of our area function by using the first or second derivative test, and I assure you it will work out. So now we're pretty much there, we just have to plug this value back into our area function here, and that will give us the largest area. So area equals 1 half times a, which is root 2, times root 
of 4 minus a squared, a again is just root 2, and we're squaring that. So this becomes 1 half times root 2 times the root of 4 minus root 2 squared, which is 4 minus 2, which is equal to 1 half root 2 times root 2, which is equal to 1 half times 2, which is equal to 1. So there we go. That is the largest area of a right triangle inscribed within a circle of radius 1. The area is equal to 1. Here's our next problem. We want to consider the set of rectangles inscribed in an ellipse x squared plus y squared over 4 is equal to 1, such that the sides of the rectangle are parallel to the x and y axes. And we want to know what are the dimensions of the rectangle with the largest area. So here we've got a diagram of our ellipse and a rectangle inscribed within it. And why don't we say the corner point of the rectangle in the first quadrant is x, y. The first thing that we want to do is to write our area function, because that's what we want to maximize. So area equals what? Well, area equals base times height for this rectangle. And if we know the distance from the origin to the right side of the rectangle is x, then the base consists of two of those distances, x and x. So base is 2x. And then height, if we know the distance from this x-axis up to the top side of the rectangle is y, then this is y, and so is that y and y. We've also got 2y. So that means area is equal to 4xy. And of course, we want to express this area function in terms of a single variable because we want to maximize it. Thankfully, we have an equation that we can use to solve for x or y in terms of the other. We've got x squared plus y squared over 4 equals 1. So why don't we start with that equation, x squared plus y squared over 4 equals 1. Let's clean it up a bit, multiply by 4 to get rid of the fraction. So 4x squared plus y squared is equal to 4. And why don't we just solve for y squared? So y squared is equal to 4 minus 4x squared. Solve for y. y equals the square root of 4 minus 4x squared, a positive root since we want it to represent a length. So we plug this in, we find that the area is equal to 4x times y, and y is just the root of 4 minus 4x squared. So now we've got our area function in terms of a single variable, and we can differentiate using the product rule. So derivative of area is equal to the first term differentiated, 4x derivative, square root of 4 minus 4x squared, and then plus 4x times that second term differentiated. So square root of 4 minus 4x squared derivative. Now this first term, that's easy. Derivative of 4x is just 4. So 4 root 4 minus 4x squared. And then the second term is a bit tougher, but it's still doable. The root is like a power to the 1 half. So bring that down, part of the power rule, 1 half times that original expression inside the root, 4 minus 4x squared, and then decrease that exponent of a half by 1, you get negative 1 half, and then you've got to apply the chain rule to the inside, the derivative of the inside of the root, the derivative of 4 minus 4x squared, is just negative 8x using the power rule. So we go ahead and simplify all of that, we get 4 root of 4 minus 4x squared, and then minus 16x squared over the root of 4 minus 4x squared. So there we go, that is the derivative. And to find the stationary points, we want to set that derivative equal to zero and solve. And again, we will go ahead and multiply by this square root to clean up the equation a bit. Multiply by square root of 4 minus 4x squared. We know we're allowed to do that because it's non-zero. And we know that because x can never be 1. Otherwise, if x were 1, the x would lie perfectly on the x-axis and we would just have a line segment across. So that's definitely not the case. So we go ahead and simplify this equation. We get that 0 equals 4 times 4 minus 4x squared. The roots cancel. And then minus 16x squared because the denominator cancels. So we go ahead and solve this. 0 equals 16 minus 16x squared minus 16x squared. So 0 equals 16 minus 32x squared 
let's bring that up here to continue solving. So 32 x squared equals 16. That means x squared is equal to 1 half, which means that x is equal to the square root of 1 half, which simplifies to 1 over square root of 2, which simplifies to square root of 2 over 2. So that's our value for x. And you can check that this is a maximum of the area function by using the first or second derivative test. I assure you it will work out. Now all that remains is to figure out what is y. And to do that, all we need to do is plug in this value of x into our y formula. So y is equal to the square root of 4 minus 4 times x squared. And x is just root 2 over 2. We're scoring that. So simplifying, y is equal to root of 4 minus 4 times 2 over 4, which is equal to the root of 4 minus 2, which is equal to root 2. So that's the y value. We've found x and y, so we can just label that in our diagram. y is equal to root 2 and x, both of the x's are equal to root 2 over 2. So that means the overall height of the rectangle is root 2 plus root 2, which makes 2 root 2. And the overall width of the rectangle is just root 2 over 2 plus root 2 over 2, which makes just root 2. So there's our dimensions. The dimensions of the rectangle are root 2 by 2 root 2. And that is our final answer. So now we know how to do optimization problems with inscribed shapes. And in the future, we'll continue learning how we can apply techniques from calculus to solve applied optimization problems.